Hello everybody. Okay, I'm going to do an updated shampoo bar packaging video. So in my last shampoo bar making and packaging video, um, I'll show you how I use my mould that I buy from Etsy. This is from a company called The Maker Shop and shop is spelled S-H-O-P-P-E, so The Maker Shop. And I buy a 2.75 inch press mould. So this comes in three parts, so there's the base. And then that goes, that see-through bit goes on the top. And then that's the press, so you can press your shampoo bars or your soaps, whatever you want to do. Um, so I'm just going to show you an updated way. So what I've realised is after pressing, they need about two to three days to dry out on the shelf. Whereas if I just take them out of the mould, like I'm using, sorry, this is a bit of a mess, but I use these pebble moulds for mine as demonstrated in the shampoo bar video. So when they come out, they're sort of crunchy on the top, if you see what I mean, like all pitted. And what we want is them to be smooth, like the bottom side of them. So to do that, we need to use the press. Now, when I was using the press before, I would use um, some tapioca starch or anything like that that will stop these from sticking in this blue mold. And somebody mentioned to use paper or to use the wrapping paper that you're going to wrap them in. So I use my own branded wrap and I use mine in, I make them into circles before I wrap those like I, I've shown in that video. But um, somebody said, oh, you could just use the paper. This was in the comments section of the video. You could just use the paper and like immediately package them. So I did actually try that method to get them to look like this. But the trouble is that when I used that method, I had not realized that they do need a few days to dry. So it was making them discolor all the paper, which was not ideal. So what I've decided to do is to press them using some paper. These are just some bits I've been using. So use the paper to press them so that stops the sticking and then just leave them to dry. So they're pressing like this. I'm just doing a few here. So I'm leaving these to dry on the shelf then for another sort of two to three days before packaging them properly. So I'm gonna show you what I've been doing. So I'll bring you down and aim you so you can actually watch the process of me doing this. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna unmold one. So sometimes, like I showed in the last video, I will just sort of take these edge pieces off there where it's just gone over the edge in the mould and then I would plane the top of this off. But they don't look as nice. They look like that when they're finished, but it's, it's not a professional finish. So to get that professional finish, what we want to do is get our little mould here, put that over there. So I get the piece of paper and just pop it onto the top of there and crunchy side down so we get a good press on it just push and it will fit into this mold this will only work if you're using these pebble molds and I've got the link below I think you can buy them on eBay still it's where I've got all of mine so I just bought several several of those so just fold it over fold it in push it down and just get the top and you're going to use some pressure so I'm just going to lean on it so while these do take a while it just still gives you the finish that you're looking for they look a little less handmade if you see what I mean and a little more uh, handcrafted let's say handmade I've just uh, kind of gone off the word <laughs> okay so then you just undo this and you can use the paper several times before it gets too sort of mucky to continue with and just use another piece. If you're just using some grease proof, which is the ideal thing to use, not to branded wrapping paper, it's just I've got these to hand. So there you go. The base is now nice and smooth. And so is the top. They just look better and you do get like a sort of ridge around the outside as well. So these are gonna go out the back to dry in a second. So I'll just do the second one. That's the last one I've got left. I've been doing a whole bunch of these yesterday. This is just the last bit of the job. So again, put it down and just push slightly before folding the paper in 
and in again. This is really for the people who've bought this shampoo bar recipe because you've been asking me all these different questions, how to package, how to do this, how to do that. So I did the video so you can see how I make them and get the mixture correct. But the packaging is also an issue. So you can use whatever packaging you like, but a lot of people wanted to use this mould because these are not the type that you see. They're made with the same ingredients, but I don't. you don't see any noodles present in these. It's Everything is melted down to the point where it's kind of like a, a jelly sort of gloop and you'll see in the making video what it looks like before moulding. So they're a bit different in the way that you approach the packaging and the moulding. So they won't go into those fancy moulding machines that you see the people using. This is just a cheaper way of doing it but it's the only way to do these because it wouldn't work in any other method for this recipe. So this formula is so good. It's a customer favorite for my own business. People go crazy for these. Every time I make them, they just sell. So I have to keep making them. So there we go. And then the finished product, I just get my, um, just wipe my fingers off. I get my labels printed because it's very, very difficult to get all your text and everything perfect when you use your own printer with round labels I found and I've tried every way and it still goes wrong so I get them printed for the top and then the ingredients on the back I just print myself and just go straight rather than going circular so that's my packaging but obviously you're going to make your own branded wrap but if you want to get labels in the UK I use a company called Flexi Labels so you have to upload your artwork in um, PDF format and they'll they'll print for you and there's like a certain amount like different varieties that you can get depending on how many you get printed. So Flexi Labels is the company I use. Um, in the States, I wouldn't have any idea. I mean, there's, there's probably tons and tons of different label suppliers. So usually in soap making groups, you'll get that information. If you just ask the question, where do people get their labels printed? A lot of people will give you advice on which printers to use. Um, the only trouble I find with coloured labels is no matter what printer you get, unless you've got one of those super duper office printers, the, I use a laser printer myself, but you just never get the quality that a proper printmaker can give to you. It's just not happening. It doesn't matter how many times I put it through, how many dots per inch I put it through as the quality, the fineness of the print, it still does never turn out the same as what this can. And the same goes for my soap labels. If I get them printed, then they just come out so much better. I'll show you recently. I've got to a new range out so I did a different colour so you get that nice shine and everything just looks way 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 more professional when you get your labels printed rather than doing them in-house so that's a little tip for you there if you've got any questions leave them below if you want the recipe that will also be below as well as all my soap recipes the hair conditioner recipe the whip soap recipe that's all below in my Etsy shop and I will speak to you soon Ta-ta.